welcome you to St James Church on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Today it's a great joy to have among us uh, two guests, uh, Mother Catherine Eaton, who is our guest preacher, well known to us, a friend of our parish, and also Father Christopher Waterhouse, who is our celebrant today. Uh, it's good to keep our connections with the wider church, and we do it in a very practical way as we gather together. We gather in worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said this is the great and first commandment and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. 
with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the midst of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Great and loving God, your will for us in your Son, Jesus, is the peace which the world cannot give, your abiding gift, the advocate he promised. Calm all troubled hearts, dispel every fear, and keep us steadfast in love and faithful to your word. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately started to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate of, by the river where we su were supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon them. For the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Revelation of John. And in the Spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels. And on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 are the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its Lamb is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. For the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. For the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be with you again. Thank you, Father Andrew, for your invitation, and what a delight to also share in this liturgy with Father Christopher. Well, we've had the trifecta, an election, general synod, and a war. Glimpses of nation, church, and world behaving badly. Three very different events and contexts, but sadly displaying some of the same distortions of human nature and the fracturing of relationship which have shaped humanity's existence from the start. Division and conflict, the desire for power and control, inflated and ambitious egos, aggression and violence, if not in deed, then in word and thought, 
clumsy and manipulative dealings with the truth, duplicitous tactics, and a disrespect and hardness of heart towards others. While we don't yet know the ongoing implications of these three events, if you like me, it's enough to leave us feeling overwhelmed, helpless and despairing as we witness the damage being done. But into all of this, Jesus introduces something new, something unique. Peace I leave with you, says Jesus. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. In today's gospel, Christ entrusts his own peace to his community of followers, those who will become his ongoing presence, his body in the world. His peace entrusted to the church and by implication to each and every one of us. This is something much more than any peace the world can manufacture. It operates at a deeper level and has a much vaster reach. As Brendan Burns says, this is a peace that the world is utterly incapable of giving. Worldly authority can from time to time bring about an absence of hostilities between human beings and human societies. It cannot erode the fundamental insecurity and anxiety at the root of human existence. The peace Jesus is leaving with the disciples extends God's grace and love deep into the human heart. We know what peace is not. It's not just an absence of conflict or a silent standoff. And it can never be born of the suppression of truth, oppression of peoples, or repression of feeling or memory. Peace is not just about having things under control or feeling comfortable and safe. The peace Jesus offers is something quite different also to the calm and relaxation promised at the newest spa resort. So what is this peace that Christ offers his followers? Given that there are apparently followers of Christ active in all three of the aforementioned events, people to whom Christ has also entrusted his peace, one could be left wondering how we might discern it. However, we won't go there, as I would no doubt end up judging people of things of which I too am guilty. The more important question is discerning what this peace of Christ is and what it means for us. The peace which Christ gives is just that, something given, but not something for us to possess, take hold of, or even understand. This peace is something to live out of, a way of being, both because it offers us a way into a greater reality, as well as a different way of being within ourselves. This peace is a sign of the risen Christ's life within us, a mark of our new identity as his ongoing presence in the world. Jesus entrusts his peace to us, his own peace that has carried him through all the encounters and uncertainties and sufferings of his own life and ministry, a peace born of his relationship with his Father, the ultimate foundation for his life and his identity. We are now being drawn into that same reality and given a gift which will sustain and enable us to be Christ today in this world in which we live. It's a gift that will enable us to live out the commandment to love which we were reminded of last week. It's a gift that reminds us of our oneness in Christ's, bo Christ's body, the unity which Jesus will pray for us in next week's gospel. And it's a gift that will be reinforced at Pentecost when the Spirit comes to guide us into our future. Christ's peace given to the church, but each of us must 
must also consciously accept it and be open to its indwelling. How do we do this except primarily through our prayer? We all have different ways of praying. I know the number participating in the daily offices here has grown. I also know you have a meditation group. But we're all unique and have unique ways of praying. So however you pray, it seems to me, our prayer is key for opening up to the peace which Christ offers us. However we pray, as we move more deeply into our prayer, we can find ourselves carried beyond the words into a silence, a place of receptivity and waiting, a place of openness, an awareness of something more present. Here we come to know the peace which Christ offers from the inside out. Because we're opening ourselves to the presence of Christ himself, we find ourselves drawn into a place where all the false separations, the binary distinctions, the distorted perceptions all fall away. Christ's peace is given to the church so it can be incarnated and lived out in the world, and so is given to each and every one of us as beloved members of Christ's body. One consequence of this gift of peace is that from it we can begin to reawaken and rediscover some of our own inner unity and deeper self. As an example, I have lived with anxiety all my life. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Words of comfort and encouragement. But his words don't touch where my anxiety resides. His peace does. And it's only as I've learnt over the years more about entering into Christ's peace through the deepening of my prayer that I found new ways of being with the daily struggles to keep steady. Discovering ways of allowing my anxiety to be absorbed into the presence and peace of Christ has enabled not just some healing for me, but a deeper insight into my, into my own inner landscape and a greater awareness of Christ, who has always dwelt there. This peace, however, is not my personal possession, but is, when I give myself to it, a reality to live out of, so that Christ's peace can flow through me and be activated in my way of being and behaving in the world, in my relationships with others, in my actions and choices. But this gift of Christ's peace to his followers is given for the sake of the whole body of Christ. Because as St. Paul once reminded us, when one member of the body is fractured, um, the whole body suffers. The more this peace does its work within us, the more we are freed to become Christ's peace active in the world. This will show up obviously in our relationships and our actions, but also in our prayer. If you're like me, you've found it hard to know how to pray for some of the things going on in the world at the moment, the election, the synod, and the war for a start. But what we can do is enter into that place of Christ's peace within us and allow Christ's own prayer to work from there to extend across the miles, freed from our own biases, fears, and perceptions. Christ's peace within us, extending, flowing out beyond us and our little worlds. For that is our new capacity in the risen Christ. We come to inhabit a much greater reality, born not just of Christ's oneness with his Father, but of our oneness in Christ, and consequently with all creation. As we move more deeply into the peace which Christ has entrusted to us, 
So we find we're more able to extend that peace into the world, into those places where conflict dominates, towards those communities which are torn apart and frightened, and into a church where people have forgotten the gift bequeathed to us. And we can believe it has effect. There is a bigger reality in which our prayers are held, into which we pray, a reality not separate from the one we see and touch and live into in our daily lives, but a reality infused with resurrection's promise. It is no accident that the greeting of peace is at the heart of our liturgy, the moment which ushers us into the Eucharistic meal. The exchange of Christ's peace reminds us that all of us are recipients. Each one of us has been entrusted with that peace, a peace which offers us a way to live differently, to find a new integrity and cohesion within ourselves, and to discover new ground for the choices we make. But the greeting of peace also reminds us that each one of us, in receiving Christ's peace, is also given a responsibility for it, to ensure that Christ's peace is free to flow outwards to others and into the world. Albert Einstein said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. What Christ offers us in this piece is a different way of being, a different way of knowing, and a different consciousness to bring to our wounded world and church. The Lord be with you. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became true human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Let us pray for the world and for the church. We pray for the nations of the world, for all in places of conflict and oppression, and we pray that you will help resolve the conflict in the Ukraine. For those who suffer famine or disease, for the homeless and the dispossessed, open our hearts to receive your peace, that aggression, injustice and distrust may cease and your people live together in trust and harmony. God of promise, hear our prayer. We pray for Australia and we pray for your guidance and wisdom to the incoming administration following the federal election yesterday. We pray for indigenous peoples of this land and for all who have come to this land seeking a new life of acceptance and opportunity. Open our hearts to receive your peace, that prejudice, fear and intolerance may cease and your people live together in mutual goodwill and respect. God of promise, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for all pastors and teachers, for youth workers and evangelists, and for all in this place who minister in your name. Open our hearts to receive your peace, that we may know ourselves loved and forgiven and faithfully proclaim your gospel throughout the world. God of promise, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for those who lack the resources to meet the demands of life, for the disadvantaged, the destitute, and those without hope. Open our hearts to receive your peace, that greed, selfishness and neglect may cease and all your people be cared for, welcomed and valued. God of promise, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need, for the lonely, the friendless, for the sorrowing, for the sick, including Herb and Heather Anderson, Muriel Porter, Sister Jeanette Fox, Father Robert Collings, Tony Narkey, Colin Dunstan, Johan Nell, Ruth Jones, Anne Ryan, Francis Rolfe, Peter Renwick, Ali Crawford, Zambara Ruth Bulyaba, Katie Richardson, Joyce Smith, Thelma Steele, Campbell Wharton, Elliot, John Gillam, Graham Cooksley, Oliver Peck. Open our hearts to receive your peace, that in distress or despair, pain or grief, we may entrust to you our hopes and fears. But also we give thanks for the recovery of Olivia Johns, God of purpose, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in your love, including Ray Sharp, Robert White, Shirley Llewellyn Jones, Catherine Hudson, Bishop Philip Newell, Kathleen Mulder. We pray for your faithful people in every age, for those of this parish and yearly remembrance occurs at this time. As Lydia welcomed you into her heart, open our hearts also to receive you, that with Lydia, Paul, and all your saints, we may know the peace that you alone can give and come to dwell in the everlasting glory and light of your presence. God of promise, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. 
grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please would you share that gift of peace with those around you. this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended. A new day has dawned. A broken world is restored. And we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. We pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Bless the Lord and glory and power, my Lord. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. This is the table, not of the church, but of God not of the righteous, but of the poor in spirit. It has been made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have a little faith and wish to grow it. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for some time. You who have tried to follow, and all of us who have failed. Come not because I invite you. It is God, and it is God's will 
that those who seek God will find God here.
and all around us. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring life to all creation. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please be seated? Once again, we welcome all those who have joined us for worship today and especially those who are with us online this morning. We give thanks also to Mother Catherine and Father Christopher in leading us in worship this morning. I remind you that you're welcome to join in refreshments after the service in the covered courtyard. Uh, this week, on Tuesday at 7.45, Resting Space will be meeting online. On Wednesday at 7.30, after Evensong, uh, will be the Robin Sharwood Lecture in Church Law, which is uh, conducted in conjunction with Trinity College, Melbourne. The speaker this year will be Michael Shan QC on the Law and Religious Institutions. Obviously, that has some connection with the idea of uh, uh, legislation for religious discrimination. Uh, perhaps it may not be happening with a new government, but nevertheless, it continues to be an issue in our own time. And so we look forward to hearing from Michael Shand on that topic. On Thursday, uh, Thursday is Ascension Day, and there will be a choral Eucharist at 6.30 p.m., uh, here in the church. Next Sunday, being the last Sunday of the month, uh, there will be Coral Evensong at 4 p.m. on the topic of Christian unity being the commencement of the week of prayer for Christian unity. And the preacher on this occasion will be Dr. Ray Williamson. Please note coming up, uh, noted in our prayers today, is the death of one of our, our loved parishioners, uh, Ray Sharp, and his funeral will be held on Tuesday the 31st of May at 10.30. Also, please note, coming up on Thursday the 2nd of June is the St Lawrence House Big Event at the Freedom Hub Waterloo. This is the main fundraiser for St Lawrence House, and the speaker on this occasion will be Bernard Salt on COVID's long-term impact on society. Uh, tickets are available online at the St Lawrence House website. Uh, it's always a great evening of fellowship, of food, and, and, uh, but also to hear good words uh, from, on this occasion, Bernard Salt. I encourage you to come along. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Uh, but today, as on this more special occasion, we're going to pray for our new federal government. So let us pray. Most gracious God, ruler of the nations, we pray for the parliament of this commonwealth, its members and officers, and especially Anthony Albanese and those who will form the new government. Direct their work and influence their decisions to the advancement of your glory and the safety and welfare of this country, so that peace and happiness, truth and justice may be established among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand?
brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Thank you.